Welcome inside the Humor Lab, where today we're going to case study two of my favorite jokes. And I'm going to show you how I took them from premise to punchline and thought about the words every step of the way, and more importantly, how you can too. But before we get into the jokes, let's take a look at what I view as the joke writing process, because I do think big misconception and then, you know, a lot of bad ideas when it comes to joke writing, that the idea of joke writing is I have to write a joke. I see something funny, I think it's something funny, and I have to write the joke, mm, right? But it really is this four part process that allows you to really define what the joke is, why you think it's funny, and then take it for a ride. To me, joke writing is about defining that premise and then dragging it through your subconscious, allowing you Every memory, every thought, every emotion, what the joke makes you think of rise to the surface and then you're building a pile of raw materials from that that you can now construct the joke and then take it into the punch up phase. But first, we want to mine for material, just identifying premises, thinking more conceptually why you think it's funny, but just getting them ready to take into the brainstorming process. Once you're in there, letting it just go for a ride. What does one thought make you think of when that next thought leads you to something else? And just kind of building, as I said, this pile of raw materials that you can now apply the joke writing formula. And remember, what I'm teaching here is long form stand up, not set up punchline, but set up. Describe the situation. Punchline, tagline, throwaway line. And I'll explain all of this later. And then once you're left at the end of the last part of the process, we're in the punch up phase. And if it's a joke, we're trying to make the joke funnier, find the right word, more descriptive words, more colorful words, funnier words, less offensive words. This is where you can start to walk the jokes back. Um, and really thinking about how the words will be received by the audience and making the best choices there. But if you wind up doing this, and I'll walk you through my process and how we case study these two jokes, uh, but just think about it this way for now. Understanding your truth is your biggest asset. You know, an ounce of truth is worth more than a pound of lie. This is what's gonna be engaging. This will also help you as once you get into the brainstorming process, because if it is your truth, there's a heck of a lot more truth behind that. So you want to start off that way uh, strategically and with intention. Never discount the power of pen in hand. It stimulates the mental hard drive, opens up the creative process um, a heck of a lot more than a keyboard would do. So, you know, put a pen in hand, get that notebook and start writing out these things. You'd be amazed at starting off in that positive place what amazing things can happen. And this last one is, is huge as well. Most people write jokes or write content in the paragraph form. They're basically writing the material to be read versus said. One thing I want you to think about is you're always writing dialogue for either you or for a character, um, but it is dialogue. It isn't, it isn't like a book or it isn't like you know a proposal or something like that. You really wanna write it as dialogue separating each part of it. And then what happens is the words can be isolated. You can focus on each word individually, whereas if they were in the paragraph form, they would all run together. Also, the paragraph form affects timing. You know, the words can't come to life if they're in the paragraph form. They have to be broken out and that'll make more sense in a second. So with that, let's get to our first joke. Not now though, not a, not a kid's in their car seat, right? Car seat, great invention, saves a lot of kids' lives. But I think that's what messed with their head a little bit, right? Because they sit in that chair like it's their little throne, don't they? Right? Just... <laughs> right? They give a shit that you're driving a car at 70 miles an hour. They just sit back, barking out demands like they're Caesar. That... I believe in the juice box. <laughs> Please, some goldfish, my men. Then I'm finding Nemo, he amuses me! <sighs> Five minutes later, take him away! I've grown tired. Bring me the one they call SpongeBob. So the inspiration for that joke, true story, my brother and I took my nephew Lucas when he was about three years old down to Disney World in Florida. Started the trip in DC, so about 12 hours we were in the car. 
And Lucas was in his car seat about three years old and he would take a nap and he would just kind of wake up. And as soon as he woke up, he just start demanding things. I want something to eat. How far away are we? Put on a movie. And it struck me that he was sitting in that little chair like it was his throne. So the, 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 the initial premise was kids in their car seats. And that's enough. Now, as I started to define the premise, it was kids in their car seats sitting in that chair like it was their little throne. And now as I move into the brainstorming process, the premise is defined. So all these memories of, you know, kings and 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 and, and, and movies and, and and just ideas and thoughts and things Lucas has done before and things other kids have done before all come to the surface. And then the word tyrant came to mind. And this is where you really want to vet the words. Tyrant is a funny word. It's very descriptive and tulip, I mean, excuse me. Lucas was acting very tyranny, but it's a negative word as well. It's got negative connotations. And I want this joke to be a cute, fun joke, you know, that everyone can enjoy and not as soon as they hear the word tyrant, they shut down and it's what I call the bleed throughs will come in, you know? So I didn't want to use tyrant. I got to walk it back. So King Tyrant, as it's going through my subconscious, the movie Gladiator comes up. And really that was the choice. He wasn't a tyrant, he was a Caesar. Very gluttonous, just sitting there, just, I believe I need a juice box. You know, starting to use syntax that Caesar would use in writing the dialogue for me, but from the point of view of a three-year-old. You know, please, some goldfish, my men. Turn on Finding Nemo, he amuses me. And all of this is what I call act-outs. You know, it's, it's a way to enhance and elevate the material. Um, really performing it out. But, you know, it has to be funny first and the act outs will elevate the material, but the material has got to be good on its own. Um, there's only so much the act out can do. But with that in mind, let's take a look at our next joke. See what little kids get to play with now? <gasps> they got good toys now. Virtual reality, DVD, CD-ROM, computer games. And what do they always say? They're bored. They don't know what bored is. You spend all day in room with a freaking extra sketch. That's bored. <laughs> you spend a rainy day with a light bright. That's as bored as it gets right there. Just. So I think that toy joke is a great example of how to, I use the joke writing formula. Simple setup, description of the situation, only the words that need to be there, punchline, tagline, throwaway line. And let me explain quickly what taglines and throwaway lines are. Since we're mining for the material in the way that I showed you in the joke writing process, we're gonna come up with four, five, six, some of my jokes have 14 punchlines. I'm gonna come up with a lot of punchlines that, you know, we don't want to just pick the best one, you know, in, in traditional stand-up setup punchline, you pick the best punchline and use that one, but we want to pick the best few. And instead of using segues, become really efficient with how we connect the material. And literally the taglines and throwaway lines should lead you right into the next piece of material. And know that the anatomy of joke writing can work for your campaigns, can work whether you're writing a joke or you're just trying to write any form of communication. It's a very efficient, way to communicate, but also an incredibly efficient and intentional way to create and construct the material as well. So with the toy joke, very simple. Have you seen the toys kids get to play with now? They got good toys now. Virtual reality, computer games, they don't know what bored is. You spend all day in your room with an etch sketch that's bored. What a piece of junk this is. Why does somebody kill me? I'd rather be in school you know, using the act outs to elevate and enhance the material, but knowing that the joke has to be solid, you know, there's only so much the act out can help, you know. Uh, so, you know, keep that in mind. And two big things to keep in mind before I leave you, in joke writing, editing is everything. Just get down to the words you need, you know, and then try to be really efficient with those words, you know. Is there one word that can do the job of 20, as we mentioned? Carlin was great at this. I mean, a master of editing. Remember, his, his material was so controversial. Whether you agree with his politics or not, we all have to agree that this was one of the greatest joke writers to ever live. And he didn't have any wasted motions because he had to get his point of view across 
because he was on the clock before, you know, people, if they use their own thought process, might take the dog joke in a different direction. So he had to solidify his point of view quickly, and he was one of the greatest editors of all time. Timing, you know, again, we got the greatest joke in the world and then not tell it well. Um, and the delivery and the timing could be the thing that affects us. 2,000-year-old man records. I learned everything about timing. Remember, it's about coming in a fraction of a second early, fraction of a second late, can compromise the whole joke, how to hold the audience there, and you know you're about to beat them over the head with the joke. So I learned a lot about that, how to be heavy-handed and gentle at the same time. So go check out the 2,000-year-old man. Check out George Carlin.